Hi, many engineers think that learning a software is the most important aspect of learning structures. They try to master a software like ETAPS and then think that that's going to help them to shift to a structural career. I hope you have not been doing this. Yes, you have to learn ETAPS. You have to learn the smartest tools for structural design. But then that should not be the end of the world for you. You also need to know a lot of concepts, a lot of basics along with the software learning. At the same time, I want to stress the importance of validation in your workflow. You have to introduce hand checks in order to establish that your software is giving you the right results. There can be a lot of reasons that the software gives you a wrong result. It could be a problem with your modeling. It could be a problem with your idealization. It could be anything. So it's at most important that you validate your results and ensure your analysis and designs are safe. Hi all, this is Premjit here from Civilera.com. Today, I'm going to introduce a very basic step that you should introduce as a validation in your workflow. Let me show you what that is. I would recommend you three types of checks in your workflow. One is going to be your software based check that is your ETAPS has inbuilt checking methods which you need to employ in order to ensure that everything is fine. Please note that I have a different video on this topic so you can check my YouTube channel for this video on how to check in ETAPS. Second would be a process that you introduce for your checking based on your various challenges and errors that you make while modeling. Maybe I will make a different video for this later sometime. Anyway, this is included in my courses and mentoring programs. Thirdly, you will have to introduce behavior based checks in your analysis workflow. And there can be many number of checks that you will have to adopt. I'm going to show you one today, which is checking the support reactions of the model in ETAPS. I have a model over here, which is completed and I have done the analysis and this is ready for further processing and design. Even though I have checked everything for error in ETAPS, I would like to ensure that everything is perfect by matching the reactions. So if the reactions don't match, then you should further check the model for any other kind of errors. It could be a modeling error or any kind of errors that will create a loss of load. So let me show you how we can check the reactions and match with the total load. So the total load applied and the reactions are required to be matched. So let me go to the plan and then take the foundation level and display the support reactions. And for easy explanation, I would use a case and I will use the live load total, which is the most easiest to check. So I'm going to check this and I'm going to display F set and I'm going to say arrows or tabulated whatever and then say apply. So now you can see that there are different reactions which are shown here. So I'm going to pick up this particular column. Now I'm going to note down that particular value in that particular column, which is approximately 970 kilonewtons. So let me note that down for your understanding. So 970 kilonewton is the load on that particular column. Let me come back to the ETAPS model and go to the upper level and then show you. I will mark the spans in order to make a few calculations. So I will go to draw and then take draw dimension lines and then I'm going to indicate these dimensions over here. So let me mark the dimension over here so you can see it is six meters and here also it is six meters. So both are six meters. And if you look at this particular distance, it is five meters. So you can see those dimensions. If I mark one more dimension that is over here, even that is going to be five meters. So if you look at this particular column, it will have an equivalent area load of this much. Say for simplicity, let me take a screenshot of this and then take that into the white board. So I'm doing the screenshot and I'm taking it to the whiteboard over here. So let me paste this and then you can see the column with the dimension over here and you know that the contributory area is half the span. So this is likely to be the contributory area of this particular column. So this much area of the load is going to come onto that particular column. So if you measure this, you know that this is three meters and this is three meters. So the total is six meters and you know that this is five meters and then half of that is 2.5 meters. And here also it's five meters and half of that is 2.5 meters. So the total dimension over here is five meters. So the contributory area onto that column is six multiplied by five meters which is 30. Now you need to know the load on this particular area and 
you need to know the number of loads as well. Coming back to the ETAPS model, I will display the load, load assigns, shell, and I will take the live load here. Clicking on this and then looking at this, you can see that it's 3.5. And let me also show you the number of loads. So you can see here that in the plinth level, there is no slab. And from first floor onwards, you have the slabs of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 number of slabs are present. And if you look at the terrace, the live load in the terrace is not 3.5. It's going to be 1.5. Let me also display that and show you. So in the live terrace, if you look at, this is 1.5. Now computing the total load, you know that you have area of 30 multiplied by 3.5 and you have 9 number of levels in that manner. You have 30 area and then you have 1.5 and you have 1 level. Now if you calculate this, this is going to give you 30 multiplied by 3.5 multiplied by 9 is 945 and you need to calculate this as well. This is going to be 45 kilonewton. Now, if you add both of that, 945 plus 45 is going to be 990 kilonewton on that particular column. If you remember, the load in the support in that particular column was, I'm going to display that once more for you and let us check that. So you can see that you have around 970 kilonewton over there. Now, if you check here, it's very closely matching 990 versus 970 is not a huge difference. It's a very minor difference, which is expected because when you do the analysis in the software, the exact load flows based on the stiffness. So there can be a minor difference here and there. That's not a problem. Only if there is a huge variation, then that's a problem. So now by doing this, you are validating that your support reactions are matching, which also means that there is no loss of load and probably your modeling is all fine with respect to the gravity loads. This is just one step in my mentoring program. We can have many more validation and we have many more steps in the structural design cycle. If you are keen to know more about the program, you can always check the description and the link in the description and get in touch with me for discussions. I hope you liked this video and understood the validation requirement. If you like this video, please also subscribe to the channel. Please spread a word about the channel. I would also like to have you in my groups and community. So please ensure you check civilera.com where you have links to join my groups and email lists. Thank you once more. We'll be back with another video very soon. Wish you an incredible learning.